Candidate 1, Candidate 2, Candidate 3, Candidate 4, Candidate 5, Candidate 6, Candidate 7, Candidate 8. Hello friends, I'm um, uh, The topic given to us is arranged marriages versus love marriages. Uh, according to my views and my opinion, I feel uh, Arranged as well as love marriages depend on their uh, opinions and their views. But to me, I guess love marriages would be better because if at all any conflicts come in between the partners, they themselves would be dealing with it instead of you know interfering uh, interference of parents and all would be there. Candidate one, Miss Lee's initiative, her pause and confidence enable her to win a hearing. Well, I do agree with my friend here. So she has made a very good statement and I also feel that marriage should not be a compromise. I think it should be more of an understanding. So in case of love marriages, it is usually, you know, you know the person better and you get married. So it is more of an understanding that you share with the other person. But sometimes when, I don't say that I think marriages are not, um, you know, based on understanding as such. But sometimes they are not because you do not know the partner properly, so sometimes it might not go well. Candidate 2 sends support to the initiator and also appreciates the finer points in her. She speaks fluently, forcefully and quite convincingly. She is confident and displays fair urge and enterprise. In some of the cases of love marriages, it is most of the time happens that uh, after some point of time in their relationship, they always get into conflicts. So most of the love marriages have, you know, so far been not so successful compared to the arranged marriages. It's not that love so, marriages, you know, the maturity level has to be more in the individuals before they set into, um, you know, deciding or uh, getting into, I mean, marriage, marriage life. So what, depending upon what step he has to take, whether love or ma arranged, I mean, it is, uh, you know, based on his belief strongly. I mean, one has to be committed. Before he thinks, before, I mean, before he takes up something like commitment, he has to be well prepared for that. She has shown adequate understanding of the subject and seems to enjoy a fair range of ideas. I love what I do you agree with her, you know, according to me, marriage is more of a commitment between two people. It has to be, so you should be mentally prepared for it, you know, because that's a lifelong commitment you would give to somebody. So, you know, I am more supportive of love marriages, but then I'm not completely against arranged too, because I feel, you know, in a love marriage, you've got enough time to understand your spouse and, you know, uh, enough time, to, you know, I can actually uh, start a good relation with him or her. She reveals good sense of timing and initiative and makes good use of the opportunity that came her way. Her approach is friendly and helpful. She speaks with a winning smile in a pleasant voice, which at once makes others to tune into a cooperative attitude and agreeable mood. She acts with confidence, speed, and makes up her mind decisively. And so you are in a position where you know, in a love marriage, what happens in the beginning is that you have the impression. Candidate 8 interrupts the talk, displays impatience and immaturity. She is eager to impress but do not know how to do it. It's a paradise and everything yeah. is going to be here on earth. And then when the reality of life yeah. comes in, uh, they you know, find that this quality of the whole is going to be a lot of fun. She has grasped and presented the issues involved on merit. Despite the complex issues involved, 
She has succeeded in identifying the essentials and presenting the same in the correct perspective. You know, almost 80 to 90% of arrangement. I, I disagree with her. Like, you get married to a person, you always obviously want to know the person you're getting married with. In an arranged marriage, you don't know who the person is. Exactly. So you can't spend your entire life with the person who you don't know. And like, love marriage is like what she said, like, it's like, like paradise or uh, like before marriage and not so after marriage. It is not so. If you know the person before, you know what the person is all about. So if you're ready to spend your entire life with him, it's well and good. If you're not ready, at least you have a chance to leave, you can come back. But once you're married, like India generally doesn't accept divorce as a good sign. Candidate 4 seems to bear a totally negative approach. Her inclusion in any team would be a potential hazard to harmony. She is rejected and she has used excessive body language and fillers that are to be avoided. So, I could better compare love marriage. According to me, arranged marriages are comparatively better than love marriage, you know, because present day youth, we are really not morally that responsible enough to yeah. choose our partner. Yeah, we true. tend to go in for someone based on some attractions or something like that. But according to me, arranged marriages are more a responsible decision taken by parents along with our yeah. She is able to express herself fairly well. However, she is hesitant to accept the responsibilities. She seems to be lacking in self-confidence and hesitates to shoulder responsibility. And they're very stable as well. And I know most of the time, you know what happens generally in arranged marriages, you know, it's generally arranged by your parents and also it's by chance anything goes wrong. You tend to go back. She is alert and ready to shoulder great responsibilities. She accepts the responsibilities cheerfully and succeeds in finding workable solutions to obstacles which keep cropping up. But while coping up with obstacles, she does not take her eyes off the goal. She is patient, unruffled, resourceful and determined. She tackles others with understanding and respect. is rigid, self-opinionated and intolerant. She does not look at the other side of the coin but acts rashly and jumps to conclusions on the basis of what she finds on the surface. In fact, she has preconceived ideas and notions and is swayed by her own ideas. We have a very narrow outlook here, we are just concentrating on how it is, how things are in India. Because we have a look, you know, beyond our country, where if you, if you go and talk about early marriages outside, there's something very, very important, actually, not even the challenge marriage is outside. Candidate 8 highlights the problem but does not suggest any solution. At this stage, Candidate 3 steps in to offer her comments. However, she meets with stiff opposition from Candidate 4, who disagrees with the views expressed by Candidate 3. Before things go out of hand, Candidate 2 intervenes once again and takes charge of the situation. She is supported by Candidate 1, who now enters the scene. It is left to Candidate 2 once again to resolve the problem. She makes yet another acceptable solution. But it's not so. It's not easy. I would like to make a point what my friend just said right now. She said, like, if you're not like morally that stable, that you can choose a partner for yourself. Now, when you're 18, if you're ready to decide for you, you can vote for your country. This candidate is not clear as to precisely what she wants to say or do. She keeps on saying things purely to fill up impact on the audience's poor. She proves to be a drag as before and has not benefited by the examples set by others in the group. In the arranged marriages, like people don't get, uh, like people don't understand because uh, parents, they will choose, choose the partners and they have to accept it. Uh, there, they cannot express their wishes and uh, the, 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 like their ideas and like how do we choose a partner? Someone we like them, like someone whom we like them and uh, whose interests 
match with us. So in the arranged marriages, we, uh, like we don't get a chance to select someone with whom we actually like. In the lifelong, we should compromise, compromise, compromise. Late entry. She has spoken for the first time. She appears confused. She did not take part during the earlier group deliberations. She might fill the role of a disciplined follower but cannot rise as a leader. A weak individual who can accomplish nothing on her own. No dash or no drive. She is perhaps intelligent but lacks the urge and drive and application to benefit from her intellect. An intelligent but inactive member in a team could prove to be a high liability. She will create problems not suited for teamwork. She is rejected. Because in all, I mean, in all the cases, I don't think this will be the uh, your situation. Because you have a lot of choice among your relatives or among whom are you getting married in your community. Even in arranged marriages, you have a choice of selecting your spouse. You know, in fact, before I even uh, have uh, this, you know, option of getting engaged to him, and then later, you know, getting married. She tackles others with tact and consideration, and attempts to persuade others to accept her suggestions. Getting knowing. A matured and enlightened candidate who enjoys all-round leadership ability of a high order. She has been the main coordinator and live wires of the group. She is intelligent, imaginative, resourceful and industrious. She remains cool and tackles problems competently 